Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower Channel. We're about to do a speed harvest. I'm not used to these short days and haven't quite figured out how to do all my gardening while filming it because you have to have the lighting right before it gets dark. The window's so short be between the sun not being on the towers. When I can't film it, I can't film when the sun's on the towers because it's super bright and washed out. But then that window from when it's not to when it's dark is super short. So let's go on a massive harvest really quickly and then I'll show you guys what we're gonna do with all this amazing food. This is it for these towers. They're getting cleaned and turned over tomorrow, hopefully, and some of them will start to go in the garage. I'll let the fall things finish out here. And we're still interval planting. I still have things in the young phase. I still have seedlings ready to go in, but a lot of these pepper plants and things are done and those will be coming out to be replaced with new seedlings so that we can grow peppers in the garage all winter. So let's go before it gets too dark. I have a ton of jalapeno peppers. Some of them need to be harvested because the plants just aren't tolerating the cold evenings we have, we're having right now, but some of them are doing fine. So the ones that are doing fine, I'm letting stay on the towers until after we get back from our trip. We're going away for Thanksgiving and letting them turn red so we can make our sriracha sauce. The others, I'm going to go ahead and harvest the ones that the plants aren't tolerating it well. And I'll show you guys what we're gonna do with those. I have a really cool way to preserve those in a way that actually makes them healthier for you, but then you can still use them like a jalapeno um, you would raw or without having to freeze them and things. So we'll talk about that when we get inside. <clears throat> Right, and the camera is very forgiving of the light. It's actually really dark. This plant is a great, the one I was talking about, it isn't tolerating this cold weather. This is a smaller jalapeno. Um, they're way smaller in size. And so these, you can see this variety is just, I forget the name of it. I'll put it up here if I can find it. Um, these aren't the big ones. These all came in pretty small. So I'm just gonna take the whole stem since we're running out of light and put that in my basket. And surprisingly, all the bell peppers and everything are doing great, even though we've been in the 40s at night. They're still hanging on. <clears throat> These are my fall crops, my um, cauliflower. I think we'll have enough time, but then my green beans, my edamame, they are not happy. They want to go into a warm garage, so we're working on that as soon as possible. This plant is also not happy. It's a jalapeno, so I'm just going to take the branches and I'll pull those peppers off the stem when I get inside. We have some eggplant. I shared in my last video how you know like a cabbage is mature and ready to be harvested and how we wanna go to that peak but not go over it and some signs. So you can go back and watch that video. I'll put a link below, but it's the same with our eggplant. So an eggplant that's ready and ripe. Let me see if I can find one. More peppers. <clears throat> is an eggplant's gonna be deep in color and a little bit shiny. This is actually losing its shine already. This one might be the closest. I don't know if you guys can see that. They're all kind of dulling. That means we hit our peak and we're going like this. Still a deep color, still amazing food. But then what's gonna happen is they're gonna start to change colors. They can become yellow, they can become a pale green, and we don't want that. That means that they're gonna, when I open this, it's gonna have thick seeds inside because it's starting to turn the food into what it needs to be to have mature seeds to become another plant. So that's how you know your eggplant is, needs to be harvested. So I'm gonna harvest all the eggplant because I can tell 
all of these are losing that beautiful shine that they had just a couple of days ago. And guys, I just can't even believe how dark it gets so fast. It doesn't look dark to you because I've got my camera really, really high ISO setting right now. But it's dark and darkening fast. So we're going to take all of this patio baby eggplant. It has produced so much food for so long. I can't even believe it. But now that we've got cold weather, you're going to get smaller eggplant. And if you're growing indoors, it's common to get smaller eggplant as well. They're still prolific and they make amazing meals. So definitely grow it. But just know in the summer, you can get really large fruit on here up to four inches. And as it gets cold, they just get super tiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and prune this one back too. I'm gonna keep this growing indoors and not start this plant over. But I am gonna take it down a little bit in size, get rid of some of this older parts of the plant. It's still flowering towards the front there. And I'm just gonna cut off these as well. All right, so we'll see if we can keep that one going. It'd be really cool if it just transitions indoors and continues to fruit. So these are good, they're shiny, they're dark purple. I'm catching these in time, but I'm gonna do a quick sweep. It was pretty much the jalapeno peppers, the plants that weren't doing well, and the eggplant that needed to be harvested and the cabbage, and I've got most of that. Okay guys, we did it. For you, it looks like daylight. For me, I can barely see my camera. So I'm gonna take this in, and I will see you guys in a bit when we start to preserve this food. Hey guys, so it's the next day and we're gonna ferment these jalapeno peppers. But first I need a jar. I do not know how I don't have enough jars. I've got, I've, I buy these like all the time, but. We're gonna put the lima beans in here since there's just a few of them and I will order more glass jars. I get these glass jars at Azure. They're amazing when you have enough of them. So you put that on the counter. Okay. Now the question is, do we cut them and seed them? Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm getting ready to leave town. So I'm gonna take the eggplant with me and cook those for Thanksgiving. So let me, this is all stuff I'm gonna take. And I'm just gonna throw these on the floor. And I'm gonna sweep them up when we're done. It's just easier, because my trash can's full. I guess I could unload the trash can, but whatever. Getting ready to go out of town when you have to juice and prep food, clean the house for the house sitters. It's a project. So some of these are super tiny. I'm gonna do a combination of whole fermented and halves. And the reason is the whole ones, I can go back and turn into cowboy caviar when I get back in town after they fermented. And then the halves, I really wanna save those to do stuffed peppers. And they're gonna be so good because they're gonna be fermented. And then we stuff them with like a vegan cheese and bake them a little bit. So it's just going to add a whole nother le level of flavor. 
but these little tiny ones wouldn't work for that. And I can keep adding to this jar. I have a lot more jalapeno uh, plants. I'm actually gonna count how many peppers because I'm trying to log everything. But I have five more jalapeno plants on the towers with lots of fruit. They are just doing fine where these weren't. These were not handling the cold very well. And I did not want to risk losing all these gorgeous peppers while I was out of town. So with these, what happened was they all bloomed very heavily pretty late. So well into the fall is when this one started blooming and then it got cold and it, they did not like the cold. So it kind of stunted all these peppers, which they're totally fine. These are gonna make amazing cowboy caviar because I like mine to be chopped like um, pureed. But I'm also thankful I have some that produce gorgeous large jalapenos too. Some of these are really nice sizes. Jalapenos are by far my favorite pepper. Sometimes I just eat jars of them at a time. I know, strange. Ah! I did that twice now. Okay, I'm throwing peppers on the floor. Especially hot and sweet. That's the way it's at. So the cowboy candy is if you're not familiar with that it's like a sweet syrup uh, vinegar and sugar that you pour over and it makes this spicy just so delicious um i don't know garnish you can put it over crackers with i like it with a vegan cream cheese i eat it on our tacos Actually decided I'm not going to cut and seed these. I will do it after the fact or in the next batch because we're kind of on a time crunch. I have to still juice before I run out of energy. We're actually leaving town. So I'm going to fill this jar. So this is going to be maybe nine cups of water. All right, nine cups of water, three tablespoons to four cups. I'm going to do So that would be six tablespoons. I'm gonna go ahead and add four more. So this is a long ferment. These don't go in the fridge. So I wanna make sure they're nice and safe. So this is my Redmond's Real Salt, and it's actually empty. I need to order another one of those. All right, let's stir this, and I need to put a weight to keep it down. I'm going to leave some salt along the top and let me see if this will do the trick. It's not going to work. Okay. I hate to use plastic, but I'm going to use a plastic. That will do it. Okay. Let's see if this works. 
Perfect. So I like to put salt in the lid because that's where bacteria can harbor, just where there's air. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put salt along the sides here. Make sure everything's below the water. Might need a little more water. I'm going to put a little water in this jar. I'm going to put some salt in the water that's in the jar. Just to keep that clean and pure. And I think we're good. We won't even have to open this to let it burp. You can just tap the side every few days and it, all the bubbles will release. And this is a long ferment, so this is going to sit for a while. And I'm actually going to add peppers to it um, to keep growing it. So gorgeous. My last chore is I need to stick my stinging nettle into this jar. And since the floor is already a mess, it's a good time. Now, the only thing with stinging nettle is when it's this size, it can still sting you. When we crush it in here, it won't anymore. Or once you've added boiling water over the top, so just be warned, it's not as bad, but it can be a little stingy, even in this stage. that's it we've got our ferment these are the ones I made the other day with you guys it's the hot sauce we're going on about day seven now the banana peppers smell incredible we could eat them at this point I may try one tonight oh like so good and you I don't know if you guys can see it's bubbly on top just incredible let's try one Hmm. Very mild. It's got that sweetness because I put the honey garlic in there. Mmm. Actually, I can taste the garlic too. You need a little salt. So mild though. So good. Oh, now we're getting a little kick. The closer we get to the seeds, it gets a little kick. Mm. Ooh. Now it's spicy. The garlic flavor is stronger than 
the pepper flavor. They just need a little salt. Delicious.